Hello, I'm Gil from the Wine Society's Tasting and Events team. In this video, we will be looking at the key grape varieties that have helped make Bordeaux the powerhouse that it is today. We'll look at their properties and the styles of wines that they produce, but we'll also then turn our attention to New World regions and how they are producing wines with these same varietals. Now there's a lot for us to look into, so let's get cracking. And we'll start with white wine. And this turns our attention to two great varieties, Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon. In Sauvignon Blanc, we get a high acid wine bursting with heightened aromatics of gooseberry, grapefruit, lemon, and fresh cut grass. In Semillon, we get a softener to Sauvignon Blanc's intensity. It has lower acidity, a bit more body, a bit more weight. It also lends us some stone fruit characters like apricot and nectarine. Semillon also has an affinity with oak, and if oak is used in the fermentation or maturation processes, it can give us lovely sweet spicy characters like vanilla and clove. In Bordeaux, these are typically blended together. And there are two regions that have very contrasting approaches to do that. The first is Entrée du Mer. Here, the wines are fermented in stainless steel tanks at low temperatures to preserve the natural acidity and the delicate aromatics. Sauvignon Blanc shines through in these wines with its lemon and its gooseberry and its grass. Semillon lends a bit of body and a little bit of substance to these wines and they're desired to be drunk early. Pessac Lavonia and Grave, they operate in a slightly different manner. These wines are invariably fermented in oak and often see some maturing in oak before release. While, while they still have Sauvignon Blanc's hallmark acidity, and freshness, Semillon's weight, body and structure dominates. These wines are far richer, far more powerful than the wines of Entre du Mer. They have more age worthiness and the oak that is used imparts those sweet spicy notes mentioned of vanilla, clove and there's also a little bit of nuttiness that can sometimes come through. If we're looking at new world equivalents to these wines and to these grape varieties we could be here for some time. So forgive me I will focus on just two key regions that are famous for their production of these two grapes. The first, Sauvignon Blanc in Marlborough, New Zealand. Now Sauvignon Blanc arguably put New Zealand on the world map, back in, in the wine world map anyway, in the 1980s. These wines too are stainless steel fermented at low temperatures, but they are bursting with much more pungency, much heightened aromatics to those of Entrée de Mer. And there's also lovely tropical fruit notes, in particular passion fruit, and we can sometimes get some bell pepper coming through as well. Like Entre de Mer, these are wines that are designed to be drunk young and can be great with or without food and are hugely popular the world over. If we turn our attention to the Semillon, we'll look at the Hunter Valley in Australia. And they've got a very unique take on this grape. They pick these grapes early, which gives them higher acidity and lower potential alcohol. The result is these wines typically come in at around 10 to 11% ABV. In their youth, these wines are very delicate with notes of lemon and apple. But where they differ and where they excel and come into their own is with bottle age. The wines after fermentation are immediately bottled. No oak is seen, but with bottle age, these wines develop some burnt, uh, burnt toast, some hay and some honey characters. They develop richer, more complex notes. Some producers for their top wines will hold them back and age them in bottle in their own cellars for up to five years before they release. As we turn our attention to the red wines of Bordeaux, we're now looking at three grape varieties, Merlot, Cabernet Franc and Cabernet Sauvignon. In Merlot, we get plush, plump, concentrated wines bursting with red fruit like strawberry and red plum. We also get lighter tannins in Merlot than we do in those of the Cabernets due to the thinness of their skins. Cabernet Franc, the least planted of these three grape varieties, also gives us some red fruit, like raspberries and red currants, but can equally give us some black fruits like bramble and cassis. Cabernet Sauvignon is dominated with black fruit flavors. Cassis, bramble, black cherries are in abundance. It can also give us savory notes like coffee and licorice. On Bordeaux's left bank is where Cabernet Sauvignon is king. And in particular, the region of, of Poyac gives us a classic example of Bordeaux's Cabernet dominant blends. 
Here, the intense cassis flavor is married with cedar and cigar box. These are wines with great complexity, great structure and concentration, and are hugely age worthy. As we cross into the right bank, this is where Merlot takes center stage. Most often blended with Cabernet Franc, these wines have high concentration of both red and black fruits, slightly softer, rounder tannins. But in the best examples, these wines rival those of the left bank in terms of its aging potential and certainly its quality. As we turn our attention to the New World and their expressions of these blends, we start with Napa Valley. Although Napa Valley is huge in its size, the style of its Bordeaux blends tend to follow the same pattern. These are wines with high concentration of fruit, dark fruits in particular, cassis and black, and black cherry. They can also have herbaceous notes like eucalyptus and menthol. American and French oak are also found commonly in Napa Valley, and they can give notes of vanilla, of coffee, and of chocolate. South Africa too has a love of the Bordeaux blend, and in Stellenbosch in particular, we see some very high quality examples of this. These wines tend to be lighter in body than those of Napa, and they have a wonderful herbaceous character to complement that of the red and black fruits. Now to finish the continental jigsaw, jigsaw if you will, we'll go to South America and Chile and Argentina. And Chile and Merlot is arguably for some a brand all in itself. These wines are soft, supple and fruit driven. They're designed for early drinking and are easy with or without food. Of course, Chile also produces some wonderful expressions of both single varietal Merlot and Bordeaux blends that are complex, age-worthy wines. If we hop over the Andes to Argentina, we find Cabernet-driven blends less dominated by oak and by herbal notes, but more by that intense black fruit flavour. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope it's acted as a springboard to further your own discoveries around these great varieties and these regions, and of course, more. Thank you.